going to be an awful lot of fun. We're going to go out there now because we've got the, the vacant WBA Inter national featherweight title they're both in the ring there's uh, andreas evans who i think was born in colombia but he's based in norway you may remember him he lost to ricky burns over 12 rounds and a man in the other opposite corner well one of my favorites from ireland limerick's very own big bang willie case we'll pick it up you'll see the anthems now the first voice you're going to hear after the anthem there's two men in the commentary box tonight one is the former british champion wayne alexander a bit of a devastating light middleweight puncher and the other is our voice here at Box Nation, and it'll be the first voice you hear after these anthems, and that will be John Rawling. Enjoy the fight, we'll see you when it's over. A very good evening to you, and this has got the makings of a good one to start off the evening's entertainment. Andreas Evanson against Willie Casey, real hard nut from Limerick in Ireland, and the formal introductions now being made for our first fight of the night. Pavel Cardini from Poland, Manuel Oliver Paloma from Spain, and Alfredo Garcia Perez from Spain as well. Our timekeeper at the bell is Torben Caleb Thompson, and when the action begins, our manager of the actions in the ring is the referee, heading from Italy, please welcome Giuseppe Guardarone. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing to first the fighter in the red corner, wearing black trunks and trimmed with grey. His official weight 56.8 kilograms. He's a former world title challenger. He holds a record 14 fights, 13 wins and one defeat, including nine KO wins. He hails from Limerick, Ireland. Please welcome Willie Big Bang. Introducing his opponent across the ring in the blue corner. Wearing black trunks with gold and trim. His official weight, 57.1 kilograms. He brings in his record of 18 fights with 15 victories. Two defeats and one draw, including six big wins coming by way of knockout. He comes to us from Netherhoos, Norway. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome former world title challenger known as Kit Columbia, Andreas Evansen. So the two fighters drawn together for the final words of advice from the referee. Evanson, there he is. Now living in Melhus in Norway, born in Colombia, but was adopted by Norwegian parents when he was just three months old. Up against 30-year-old Willie Casey, who's got that one defeat on his record, but it was, to some extent, it could have been a... A harrowing experience. He was blasted out in just 2 minutes 38 seconds by the brilliant Cuban Guillermo Rigondo, which was fought at Super Bantamweights for the interim title. Casey was blasted out then, but here back at Featherweight, although he sees long term his future being as a Super Bantamweight, but he recognizes that this is a real opportunity against Andreas Evanson, who, as I remember from the Ricky Burns fight, Wayne, Decent technically, but not particularly heavy-handed. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, he tried his best against um, Burns, but you know he wasn't good enough. Um, he's trying again. He's trying tonight to um, prove his point, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, he's got the weight of local support. Evanson, who's got two defeats on his record, and one of them was, as I say, for that WBO Super Featherweight title fight, as it was against Ricky Burns, and Ricky Burns was just a little bit too big and a bit too strong. Here, Evanson in the run-up to this has been saying Casey's incident for a surprise when he realises how strong I am as a featherweight. Casey, as you see, Southpaw creates problems of its own for any orthodox fighter, any fighter. Nobody particularly likes fighting a Southpaw. No one likes Southpaws. Um, the saying they should be drowned at birth, I think, is true. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Casey says that of Evanson, there's not a great deal for me to be frightened of on his record. He's been sparring, incidentally, for this one and getting absolutely in peak form under the eyes of Joseph Clifford, who's his strength conditioner. And he says he's been working more on his movement since the setback of that Rigondeau defeat. 
Nice body shot, nice right hand from Casey. Of course, the local crowd, everything that Everton does is going to be cheered to the rafters, and Casey, apart from his corner, doesn't have a huge amount of support. He's boxing well here in this first round. He's keeping his, his right foot outside his opponent's left foot and moving to his right, which is what he, a southpaw is supposed to do against an orthodox fighter. And the referee on his case is an early stage, saying keep the punches up. Let's hope we're not going to have a particularly fussy official. Let's hope that he allows the action to flow. What's your take on this opening round, Wayne? Who do you think's edging this one? Not a lot between them. It's a very even first round, to tell you the truth. Casey maybe, maybe, maybe nicking it. Of those days, he seems to keep his right, his right elbow a little bit high. Ever seen Casey seem to be left it to the body? Well, opening round there, Evanson. Everything he did, as I suspected, being uh, applauded rapturously by those who've made their way into the auditorium early on. Very bright, articulate lad. Last fought in February, he won a ten-rounder against a Nicaraguan, Julio Buitrago. And his instruction coming from his trainer, Helga Veroy. Du må få motor i gang. Det er bare å fortsette å måne opp. Fortsette å måne opp. Fortsette å måne opp hele tiden. Right? Boxing band in Norway. So he's had to very much be one of those who's had the half bag will travel and take the opportunities wherever they come. Casey's cornerman just a little bit slow to get out of the ring. The action underway once more. Been a few fighters like that. Remember Brian Mitchell, the South African, what a wonderful fighter he was, and he had all those big wins on the road, couldn't fight in his home country. That's it, yeah, I remember him in, in the 80s. Um, in the, he held a title for a few years, didn't he? And he was a tough fighter, that's a nice shot, which gets the applause of the crowd from Evanson, who's staying busy. He seems to be more aggressive in this second round. trying to stamp his authority in this round. Pushing Casey back. Had a good amateur record, Evanson. But as a kid, didn't take it up until relatively late. Like so many in Norway, where it's not really got to too much of a following. He was uh, interested in football and cross-country skiing. A lot of enthusiasm for those shots from Evanson, but I think a lot of them being taken on the on the arms by Casey. Well, that left hook, borderline, but the referee saying it was low from Casey. He's come back with two good wins, Casey, since the defeat against Rigondo. Bad knockout that was. What sort of an effect does it have on the confidence of a fighter when you have to take that sort of defeat, way? Well, it all depends on the fighter, really. I mean, a defeat like that can make or break a fighter, you know. Um, me, personally, when I was stopped, you know, as amateur or pro, it, made, it spurred me on to, to come back better, big, better and stronger. But, you know, it can, it can affect a fighter and, um, you know, make him, make him gun-shy when, when he returns. Well, Casey says that the best is still to come. He believes that he's still improving at the age of 30 and that he can get back to the top of the sport. This, remember, for the vacant WBA interme uh, international featherweight title, for what it's worth. What it does do for the winner, though, is put them in line, potentially, for a world title shot. And, of course, for Casey, a decent payday which is always a consideration. Exactly. I think the winner will probably get a top 10 ranking by the WBA. Evanson just looking that wee bit busier in the second round. He's throwing more leather. Yes, that's I agree, John. He's winning this round. That's going to catch the eyes of the judges. That bell which is sounded, incidentally, is for closing stages you'll get that before the bell itself in every round here 
There's the bell to signal the end of the round. If you're watching with us at the moment, of course, you'll be watching in free view. So maybe you haven't signed up. So to watch that big fight coming up, the James DeGale European title fight, you've got to follow what's being told you on the screen there. And you'll have to subscribe online and log in at Box Nation TV. Well, here's some of the action from that second round, and Evanson just out working Casey. Yeah, he seemed to be working well inside as well. Casey seems to be struggling when Evanson pushes him back and works his body. And apologies if you're getting a little bit of interference, I gather, on the pictures which are reaching you from Norway. So now we move into the third round. And on Wayne's card, Evanson taking the second, which squares it up. Casey just has to impose himself a little bit more, Wayne. Just needs to be doing a bit more than he is at the moment. That's it, yeah, he needs to hold Senator in a little bit more. Again, sorry about the interference that you're getting on your pictures. <laughs> Willie Casey with the red hair, the black and silver shorts. He needs to hold his ground more, Casey, and try and push everything back. He just said it done. He was really impressive the way he moved through to win the European title, stopped Paulie Highland in four rounds, and he was a winner of the Super Bantamweight prize fighter as well, Willie Casey. So we know that he can fight at a fast pace. Beat Mark Murren, uh, Josh Whale, Paul McElhinney on his way to the prize fighter success but he's just finding Evanson a bit lively at the moment and needs to impose himself yes I'm winning prize fighter and fighting the 12 round title fight is a, is a big difference you know um, it's about pacing yourself more you know and not going all out and he's certainly not fought at a particularly fast pace in the first three rounds so far, Casey. Apologising again for the loss of pictures. This, I'm afraid to say, something which is beyond our control. This round is more even round in the second round. Well, Evanson has worked with South Force in his preparations for this. And he seems to have uh, worked it out pretty well. That's better, though, from Casey. Yeah, he's firing back straight away. You know, this is what you've got to do from this way. Don't let him bully you. He's holding his ground, holding his feet. He's trying to push Evanson back. But he's just not doing enough at this stage for me, Casey. Needs to find something just to take the snap out of Evanson's work. Yeah, you'd know, you'd know. <laughs> Bit of an equaliser. <laughs> so closing stages of the third round. Casey's landed one or two meaty looking shots in this round, but Evanson, for me, on the front foot, is just out working it. Yeah, he just looked it, just looked it, you know. Atmosphere building up. If you're just joining us, yes, the main event of the evening coming up later on, and that will not be on free view. That's James De Gale defending his European super middleweight title against Christian Zanadia of Italy. Here we are in the Evanson corner. This is some of the action from the third round. There's a reasonable right hand got in there from Casey, but he seems to be just having to take two or three in order to land one decent shot of his own. And the overall impression is that he's just getting outworked. Slightly, yeah, slightly. 
Long way to go though. A lot can change. A lot of Irish fans, I'm sure, will be watching of Willie Casey. And let's hope that he can produce some vintage form here. He was an All-Ireland Amateur Champion, Willie Casey, trained by Paul and Sean McCulloch. And his favourite fighter, like a lot of uh, the fighters we seem to be commentating on nowadays, his favourite fighter, Mike Tyson. One of mine as well. Come back to me. Decent shot from Casey. Targeting the body of Evanson. Trying to just take the spring out of his legs. Casey again being told off by the referee. Not a bit of that. So far, this round's been close. It's a very close round. Casey's holding his holding his own and working the body a bit. Turn around to Orthodox and turn back to Southall just then. Needs to find some telling shots, Willie Casey. Slow this. Buzzing style fighter from Norway, Andreas Evans Evanson down. He's been sparring James Dickens, the Liverpudlian, Andreas Evanson in the run up to this. Young South Four, undefeated as a pro. He's got nine pro wins. Oh, and Casey can't allow Evanson to tee off with those sort of right hands. He's been in the round though, I think, John. I think he's just nicking it. 30 seconds left. <laughs> nice tight defence there from Casey. One of those right hands from Evanson being taken on the arms. And Evanson seems to be blowing a little bit as well, don't you think, John? Well, maybe. That's a good shot from Casey. That might have been the best punch of the round, that right hand to the body. Crowd certainly think Evanson's winning. Who did you give that round to? I thought Casey did that round, just. Well, you got it level, then. Uh, the two rounds, the two rounds that you've given to Casey, certainly close ones. Very close. Could have been either way. Well, he's clearly finding his range with some of those left hands because there's a bit of swelling underneath the right eye of Evanson having to go to work with the... Having to go to work with the iron, taking away the swelling. He's starting to punch downstairs as well now, Casey. A good win if he can win this. Oh, really announces him coming back at a good level. So into the fifth round, 12 round of vacant WBA into international featherweight title is at stake here. More importantly though, a high ranking to possibly propel the winner onwards towards a world title shot. Every time Casey throws one vaguely borderline, the referee straight on his case. Yeah, a little bit of biasness there, I think. <laughs> Once again, though, he's holding his own in this round. Pushing Emerson back. Whether or not he's doing enough to 
convince the judges though that he's winning these rounds Casey that's the question assuming it goes the distance nine of, nine of Casey's wins I should say have come inside the distance so he has got a reputation of being pretty heavy-handed if not the most fleet-footed yes he's he should try and throw the straight left to the body they had a good shot from Southall against an orthodox fighter swelling under the right eye of Evanson is getting worse and that's a good body shot nice right hand from Casey good up as well starting to get to him a bit more in this fifth round you picked out that maybe he was starting to impose himself more in the last and he's certainly building on that way he definitely is yeah Evanson seems to be tiring more than Casey well the two of them landed simultaneously there with good shots and this is a real full-blooded sort of fifth round. Now the time where Casey should be working the body. Everything's blowing. He should be working more downstairs. Throwing the straight left. Evanson with a lot of support in the crowd. Casey's work not really being rewarded by too much applause but you can see now he is starting to get through with some telling shots he's not the best in fire though he's on the back foot he's not as, he's not as positive fighting backwards fighting going backwards Another round, which I think Casey is nicking. That's the thoughts of Wayne Alexander. Evanson back to his corner for more work on that injured right eye. It's going good whenever you are starting. I do it with two ways. Two times. Okay. You, are two, you, are, you have to punch me. You know, go afterwards with a, with a one, two, three, one, two. Three. You know. They're a bit concerned. And your chap is working beautifully. He's more with your chap. He's tired. He's starting to get tired. They say that Casey is tired, but Easy is more tired than Casey. Big breath. Come here. Big breath. Casey looking a lot of pressure. Got a little nick on his right eye. He's keep on fight on his back foot, mate. Can't foot. Keep on fight on his back foot. Keep the pressure on. Keep the pressure on. Here, big breath. Well, they seem to be fairly happy that Casey now is starting to impose himself and apologies once again for the loss of pictures coming to you from Norway from Denmark rather if you could just work downstairs Casey you take a lot out of Everson by just working the body. What would you have been telling Casey if you've been in that corner at this stage? What would you have been saying? What's he got to work on? I'd be saying um, Everson is he's starting to blow. Um, and pushing back, you know, he can't fight on the back foot as well as on the front foot and, and work his body. That's the right hand from Evanson, which did get through, and he seems to have dug deep here, and he's trying to raise his work rate again, Evanson. Yeah, he's confident on the front foot. Casey had a good win last year. He stopped. A Frenchman called Daniel Codju Sassou. Sassou, who you might recall went in against Joe Murray, also went in against Scott Quigg, neither of whom could dispatch him in the manner that Casey did. So shows that the confidence is still there and the firepower. Good shot inside from Everson. Right to the body. Casey just allowing himself to be outworked a little again in this sixth round. Come out, come out. Working on there. Working on 
That was a nice south ball lead from Casey though. And he's got him into reverse gear now, which is where Wayne Alexander's been telling you he really needs to get Evanson. He's got to keep doing that. He's got to push him back and work the body. Evanson can definitely not fight on the back foot. That's a decent right hand from Casey and following it up with a nice straight left as well. That's the look of a fight which could well go the distance this one. It wouldn't be a surprise on the basis of what we've seen so far. We know yeah. Evanson's very fit, went the distance with Burns. I think been down in the first round, I remember. Open a little very strong, but not single punch it. Muck eyes. Well, it's halfway stage. How did you score that one, Wayne? That was an even round. For the first time, I know his Casey was starting to blow a bit as well himself. That was an even round. You can outbox him, you understand? Outbox him. Take big breaths, come on, suck it right up. And again, suck it up. Just be drinking, son. Actually, I remember he's he's trying to you hard on the last Casey's trainer of the round, when I was based in Belfast. He's a very experienced trainer. Beginning of the round, work, work. Oh, sorry, son. Easy points with the tag, okay? Okay. It was a good All fire as well. Paul and Sean, isn't it? That's it, yeah. You're handling, you're here's some of the action from that sixth round. Tight round, both had their moments. You see the two landing simultaneously there. Well, very much in the melting pot still, this one. On your card, Wayne, you've got Willie Casey ahead by one point. Just about, yeah, but remember he's fine away, so every round, that's close, could go to Everson. Oh, don't we know that? <laughs> Mine, it can happen in the UK just as much as it does abroad. That's true. Auditorium filling up in Denmark for the evening's entertainment, including a main event between James de Gale and Christian Senevia, the Italian, vastly experienced fighter, and that's your main event later on. If you want to see that, that will be outside the free viewing time. I don't know why Casey's not working the body. He's got to go downstairs. He's doing the right thing though by pushing Everson back. That's better. Good body shot. Good right hand from Casey. Everson takes it well though. Another close round to have Casey just nicking so far, but there's a minute left. That's good body shots from Casey. That's it, double right hooks. Hand speed though from Evanson, he's just that bit more flashy as well. So often in these, it's a case of what the judges are going to be impressed by. Casey, remember, stepping up really to fight as a featherweight here. Natural weight is lower than this, whereas Evanson is very much a, a fully fledged feather. Yes, he does look the bigger, the bigger fighter, the heavier fighter. Another tight round. Very tight round. Hard to pick that one. 
Did you go for a draw? <laughs> You're the expert. Experience tells me that the judges may well be going for Evanson in these tight rounds. Although I do think the better punches there will be thrown by Casey. That was he, was he was throwing the quality shots. That was a very even round. I mean, the draw would have been good for Take that round. Breath, no, a very even round. round. But like you said, every round that is close okay. could be game to Evanson. Andres. So, you know, he could be winning by, by, four, by four rounds, couldn't he? He's now trying Evanson. to knock you out. Could He's be. trying to come yeah. at you. You, not, you have to move now. You have to move now. And when, when I know the danger forward, signs are there, though. Keep on working. Keep on working. Keep on working. Keep on working. Yeah. Once he's going, he wants to come forward. Don't you? He wants to, wants to push you back. That's exactly what you were saying there, Wayne. When he gets him onto the back foot, Evanson is nowhere near as effective a fighter. He hasn't got much of an idea on the back foot. Did you actually get off the fence there and tell us who you thought won that one? No, I never know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the guidance. Into the eighth round there. Evanson on the left-hand side of your picture, Colombian-born, adopted by Norwegian parents here in Denmark, fighting for the WBA international featherweight title against the Irishman Willie Casey. I've noticed that Evanson hasn't thrown many left hooks, which is a good shot to throw against the southpaw. To the head or body. Uh, he's, he likes to uh, lob in that overhand right as often as possible, doesn't he? Yep. That's a decent body shot. Nice hook. And Evanson's corner are liking this. And you can hear the Irish voices from Casey's corner just trying to get him to step up the work rate. He's not done a lot in this round yet. No, this round is losing. Everson stamping his ground, stamping his authority in this round. Working the body. Two body shots from Casey, but then doesn't follow up. Solid right hand again from Evanson. Now Casey's starting to get into range and starting to force him onto the back foot. This is where he needs to be. Needs a good last minute to this round. He's doing well, but I don't know why. I keep saying it. I don't know why he's not working the body. He's not working downstairs. Not enough. That's it. Not enough. Not enough at all. He should be throwing a straight, right, straight left hand towards Everson's body. Well, he's letting this round slip away. Evanson just doing too much, outworking him. Well, this hasn't been a good round for the Irishman, Wayne. No, he's lost his round. It was with Frey, straight away ends. Down the middle. Landing against Casey. That was definitely Everton's round. I wouldn't be surprised if Evanson was ahead on the cards. Take a deep breath. You've got it dead level, Wayne. Yep. It's beautiful when you're boxing with this guy. You understand? Keep your hands go, keep your hands up all the time. He's trying to come hard. You understand? At some point, you can also go inside. Okay. I've said before. With the very tight guard. Lord of the Rings are being very close. I think. There, you understand? To be given to Everson. It's beautiful. Keep on working with the same style. More jab. Okay. They like but the way it's going. With the left hook. Okay. <laughs> right, left. And Casey right just wasn't throwing enough oh, leather in that eighth round. Outboxing. Good lift right there from Emerson. Just hand speed now, okay? Second now, round nine. So just four rounds hands remaining now. Tight guard.
And this is really a fight that, although it's not in his natural weight division for Willie Casey, this is one which was represented a real opportunity for him, and he needs to seize it. If it doesn't come through this, it would be rec recognised as something of a career setback. Yeah, maybe he feels comfortable at the weight. You know, he might have been struggling to make. Well, that's possible. Weight. Yeah. Willie Casey says he's a tough lad. He says, I come from a tough area of Limerick and I know how to work in adversity. Well, he's got to really win these last four rounds big, I reckon. Yeah, I can tell you from first-hand experience, the Marish guys, are, they are hard, tough guys, you know. <laughs> Limerick's a tough town. Yeah. They're all buzz about boxing in Belfast. I was there when uh, Sam Sexton fought Martin Rogan last year. You'd have thought it was a world title fight there at the Odyssey Arena. Yeah, they love their boxing over there. Very passionate. This is better from Casey. Switching to orthodox momentarily. To the points nearing when somebody needs to be saying to Willie Casey, look, you are in your opponent's backyard, you've got to really go out there now and put it on him. That's it, give it all or nothing, you know. This could be his last show, uh, um, uh, uh, title, so um, give it your all. Well, you'd hope that's not the case, but he could do with getting past somehow Andreas Evanson in the time still remaining. Had his moments in those middle rounds when he was landing some really good quality shots, Casey, but he's not doing a lot now. Evanson just keeping mobile, frustrating the more static Casey. Yeah, landing the straight left right, which is another perfect combo against the South Pole. you look at the faces of the two fighters, you'd certainly suggest that Case is winning. Evanson very much more marked up. They've had to work on damage to both eyes, particularly the right. Yeah, that's true, but he's, he's nicking his round as well, Evanson. A little bit too late as Casey starts to come on strong in the last few seconds, but just not enough. He's having to dig in though, isn't he? You're doing beautiful, you can out He's it. digging in, yes. But keep your hands up, open, hands up now, you know. This guy really is trying, he's trying to knock you out. Yeah. You are getting tired, but you can go there. You can go yes. the full fucking distance now, okay? Yeah. You just keep active and... Well, that's telling him in no uncertain terms. <laughs> don't go, don't stay close with this guy. He's trying to punch you hard, you understand? Just visit there inside and get quickly out, okay? And keep your motherfucker. Okay. He will take this guy. Apologize for a little bit of the language there if you are offended by it. One or two internationally recognized expletives going into the instructions. Into the tenth round. On your card now you've got Evanson edging ahead, Wayne. Just about, yeah. Casey has to win at least two of these next three rounds to win the fight. That's a decent right hand from Evanson. And this time it's Casey, the Irish strongman, who has to give ground. The binding is worked loose around the left glove of uh, Evanson. Case has been caught by that straight right hand from the first round. He's boxed well tonight, Evanson. He's boxed better for me than he did against Ricky Burns, but having said that, Casey's not got the movement that Burns has, nor indeed the physical size. No, that's true, no. 
Obviously, Burnley you know, is a world champion and a good world champion, you know. He seemed to start well in each round, Casey, for the first half a minute or so, and then he weakens. It might be that he needs to find the knockout punch that Evanson was being warned about by his coach in the corner. It might be that he needs that big bomb now to level this one up. I can't see what happened in there. He's not a puncher, is he, Casey? Well, he's stopped people. He's put people out, but he's not... He's, I don't know what you mean. He's not particularly a weak, big one-punch knockout man. He's got off, off balance there as much as anything else. But I think that Casey's starting to really feel the pace of this now. He's being caught by silly shots in that row through, through tiredness. Evanson being told to keep his hands up. Watch out for the danger shot from Casey, of course. That's the left hand. Good lift by Casey. Yep, he's having a better little spell here in this 10th round. Good body yeah, shots. That's it, yeah. More of them. Could have done with those earlier in the fight. Evanson's face really marking up now. But still with plenty of spring in his steps, although those body shots will slow him. He just threw two double right hooks. Jervis' body. Another round for Jervis, I think. Yeah, Casey landed three or four good body shots, didn't he? But there just was, he just wasn't following up the opportunities okay. as they arrived, as he got into range, throwing just single shots. So you couldn't maintain the pace, could he? You couldn't maintain it. You understand? He's got to win these next two rounds. He has to win these next two rounds. You have rounds to win. a little bit swellings here, but hey. Keep on, don't stand still, don't stand there in the close distance after the punches. They away, get away from there quickly, you know, you got the most... I don't think that swelling is affecting the vision as yet. Here we are in the Casey corner. Keep punching, bang, 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 keep punching with something. Hey, when you win the punch and exchange, keep exchanging room. Bang, 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 keep exchanging. Keep the pressure on. Let's get a vote here. Yeah, yeah, kind of underlines what we were saying, Wayne. Exactly. Just needs to throw more. Exactly. You can't let him as a bully. As soon as he was in throws, he's got to throw back. Just two rounds remaining then of our first round of the night from Denmark. Andreas Evanson, Norwegian, in the black and gold shorts on the right hand side of your picture against Willie Casey, the Irishman. Casey needs two big rounds. See, Everson's now more relaxed, you know. I think he thinks he's, he's got the fight in the back, so Casey should be um, putting a lot of pressure on him and making him work. He's down a little bit. Well, he probably reckons if he can just stay away from harm and just dance around the ring for two rounds, the fight is his. Yeah, he looks that way, yeah, he looks that way. He's got a jump in him, Casey. He's got a jump in him. He's got the body. Oh, for a passionate Irish crowd to spur him on. <laughs> Fair play to Evanson, though. He's worked to a game plan and he's worked well. This is better, though, from Casey. Starting to find the range, that right hand. That's it. Is it too late, though? This is the best spell that Casey's had for some time. Most definitely. And he knows it. He's got to stay on him, he's got to stay on him. Chin down, hands up. Keep working. Ironically, I think it was the right hand. I think it was the right hook which did the damage. It was the right hook, yeah. Now this is where Casey's corner, you can see them, implore, hear them imploring him to get forward. Come on, was the shout. Get in there and throw some punches. Two good right hands. But is it all too late? Right, 
This round's a close round again. I think he's just nicking it, Paisley. Uh, it's a very close round. Still 50 seconds to go. That's better for Paisley with left hand. Well, he's starting to walk him down now. Maybe just the speed has gone out of Evanson's footwork as a result of those body shots. Looking more tired and more ragged now, Evanson. I think this has been a much better round for Casey. Definitely, yeah. He's still got to push Everson back more, you know. He's, he's in a comfort zone, Everson. He's got to push him back. Casey has. He really looked as though he was starting to come on strong, Casey. But Evanson has been allowed to ride out a little bit of a storm and get back to his corner. May have lost the round, possibly. But on the cards, he could be still far enough ahead. Oh. Who did you give that round to, actually? Take a deep breath, Andres. Just about, Casey, just about. You know. strong, um, again, a close you round, you see? Strong. Now you need to a close round. round, um, round yes. I said it before, every round that round. is close now could be given round. to Everson. Exactly what you did last round. Keep on moving. So, you know, if this fight goes, straight forward, goes the distance, trying to punch hard. Everson could win it by, you know, times, five or six rounds. Hands up, okay? And when you hit it, be all the Being the whole first number who is hitting, okay? And don't well, you've still got Evanson okay? on your card just scraping it, but don't not by any great fast. margin. You've just got it by the single round, but uh, as you've kept saying all along, Wayne, there have been a fair number of those rounds which have been tight, and the ones which have gone to Casey on your card may have gone the other way on a home judge's card. You never know. Yeah. Anyway, looks as though it's going to go the distance now. This is the last round. Good body shot to start from Casey. Needs more. You've got to stay on him. Stay on top of him. Not quite had the speed of foot, Casey, to cut this man down. He's saying that Everson's not the best mover in the world, so he doesn't have to have great work, Casey. Everson's been in his face most of the fight. I tell you what, Wayne, Evanson is just about all in there now. If this was a 15 rounder, you'd wonder whether he was going to stay the pace. He's really feeling it in there, and Casey, if he senses the opportunity, might yet turn this around. He's very tired. I'm looking at him, he looks like a loser, doesn't he? He's busted up. He certainly does. But has Casey just thrown enough quality shots? Needs a big last last round of that, there's no doubt. See, all these rounds have been so close to him, haven't they? Yep. Casey has got to take risks now. He's got to step on this guy in the remaining minute and a quarter. If he's going to get a win, it's very much, remember, Evanson territory. He's got a lot of support in the crowd. And he was looking on to producing a winning performance in front of his own supporters. And they are now really trying to raise him. I think the crowd behind him. But Evanson's right hand again from Casey. He's nicking this round, he is, Casey. He's they're, they're going bonkers in the corner. They just want him to step on him and really plant his feet and throw leather now in this last three quarters of a minute. I say all or nothing, all or nothing. Last 40 seconds. Give it your all. Trying again to unload Good big down, hooks. Man. He's doing, well this round. He's doing well, he's winning this round. I it's, think. it's a big effort this from Casey. It could be a draw even, you never know. It could even be a draw. Well, he's had a good last round. Not perhaps just found the dominance which would have really underlined it for the judges, but he's surely taken this last three minutes. But who will have done enough when the final analysis is made?
Evanson thinks he's won it. Casey thinks he's won it. Casey good opening, good opening, good opening fight though. Definitely. Casey won that round. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a draw, but like I said, Evanson fighting in his hometown, I think he'll probably get it. Well, on your card, you've got it level. I've just done the little tally. But, and it's a big but, Evanson is the home fighter. Exactly. Look at him, though, and then look at the face of the guy in the other corner. He really does look as though he's had a hard, hard night's work, swelling around both eyes. Yeah, busted up. And he doesn't look too bad at all, apart from that little nick in the corner of his eye. The face certainly tells a story. Looking at the two guys, you say Casey's the winner. He looks fresh, doesn't he? He looks like a fresh fighter still. Where well, Everson looks busted up. I think both fighters will be happy with a draw. They wouldn't complain at nothing. I wonder what they make. He looks fairly happy. Oh, a good shake of the head there, though. And he, th he definitely thinks he's won. Here's some of the action from the last round as Casey was really trying to pile on the pressure. Heads going in. Landed some decent hooks. And there was the final bell. Tough fight. Yeah, good fight. Good fight for the crowd. And I said the draw wouldn't be unfair. I wonder. These moments must be horrible for fighters when you're up there waiting, mm -hmm. waiting for the verdict. They are, they are. I've been there a few times. You know, um, when the fight's in the, um, the judge's hands, you know. And you're, you're just praying, you're just praying that you've nicked it, you know. We know it's close. You'd be happy to get a majority, you know. Well, everybody will have their own opinion back home watching this with us on Box Nation. Ladies and gentlemen, here it comes. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we go to the score parts. Here are the score totals. We have a majority decision. Paul Courtney had it 115 to 113. Manuel Palomo had it 114 to 114. Alfredo Perez had it 115 to 113. The new WBA International Featherweight Champion, ladies and gentlemen, Cliff Colombia. Well, there we are, a bit of disappointment for Willie Casey. One of the judges scored it exactly the same as you, Wayne, 114, 114. But the other two by two rounds in favour of Kid Columbia, Andreas Evanson, winning our first fight of the night. But uh, I think Willie Casey is going to be going away from Denmark thinking, I should really have been coming away with more than just the memory of a losing performance. Evanson the winner by majority decision.